Okay, so next up we have for you a man with over 10 years experience in search technologies. He is co-founder of SLI Systems. He's been innovating in search technology space since 1998, so he's almost as old as me professionally. Um, and he has a PhD in artificial intelligence. Please welcome Sean Ryan, Chief Innovation Officer at SLI Systems. Sean. <clears throat> Uh, thank you, Kate, and welcome to you all. It's great to see us back here at the ham yard. Um, how many of you were here last year? Oh, there's a good number, um, but there's also a few that for, it's your first time, so welcome. Um, I've taken a look at the content that we have here today, and I'm confident you're going to come away with some things that can really help your business today. But we're going to start off with this, um, this kind of fantasization that I've done about thinking about what, what e-commerce might look like. And, and the purpose of this presentation is not really to say this is what it will look like, but stimulate you to think about some technologies that are coming um, and to think about how they, you, you may be able to use them in your business. Um, everyone in this room is contributing towards uh, the future of e-commerce. We, we all have the opportunity to help set that direction for what e-commerce will look like. So what, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at uh, three different trends and, um, and how the, these different trends coming together will, could potentially impact e-commerce. So the first of these is uh, the exponential growth of computing power. I'm going to talk about some, hopefully some stuff you may not have seen before, about some, some detailed models of real people uh, that are being created now, and um, virtual reality, which is a very, very hot topic right, right at the moment. Um, and this, this presentation, to be clear, is not one that you're going to come away with and say, oh, tomorrow I'm going to do this and it's going to change my business. There are other presentations here. This is to stimulate you. Now, um, about three years ago, uh, oh, longer than that, I saw uh, Ray Kurzweil present at the shop.org conference in Boston. Now, for those of you that don't know Ray, he is a futurist uh, and is currently working as the director of engineering at Google. And he, he's made all sorts of predictions about you know, what the future's gonna be. And he did this little piece of research where he looked at the, uh, the, the computing power over the years and the cost of it and charted it and came to the conclusion that it's growing exponentially. And what this graph is showing is the calculations per second that you can buy for $1,000 inflation adjusted going back to, this, to the 1900s. Um, and, and, and what he found is it's growing exponentially. Now the thing with exponentials is most of us really don't have a innate understanding of exponentials because we live in a linear world and we it's very difficult difficult for us to understand what these mean um, and to predict what we're going to be able to do as a result of things that are growing exponentially like this. To get just to give you a really simple example, um, if I was going to take 28 steps in that direction, I'd end up a bit past the, the door at the back of the room. Um, if I was going to double the size of my step each time that I took one of those steps, I'd get to home and back. And I live in New Zealand. <laughs> um, and, it's, and, and so uh, we can all do the math and, and work it out. Oh, yes, that, that does work. But um, we, we just don't have this innate understanding of how exponentials work. And so it is with, um, with Ray's prediction about where e-commerce, uh, sorry, where computing is going to go. He's... He, he predicted back in 2000 that for $1,000, by 2020, you'll be able to buy the computing power that is equivalent to one human brain, um, which is amazing when you think of it. Um, the, uh, there, there was an update he, he did just, just as recently as last year, and he still thinks that that's going to happen around that 2020 mark. Um, what's more, if we continue with this exponential growth in computing power, by 2040, you'll be able to buy for $1,000 the computing power of all human brains, and then, which is mind-boggling when you think about it. And, and the types of things you're going to be able to do with this, it's really, really hard to imagine. And Ray's come up with some predictions that look absolutely crazy. Um, but an analysis of Ray's predictions recently showed that 86% of the predictions he made back in 2000 for, for the time that has passed now have, have, have borne out. Um, uh, so it's really interesting. So keep in mind that computing power is growing exponentially. So some of the things that seem um, sort of incredible, you may be able to do soon. Um, I'm, I'm now going to talk about virtual reality. This is something that's um, uh, a very, very hot topic at the moment. Um, 
I, I see that virtual reality is, is sort of where the, the smartphone was pre-2007. Um, it's funny, when I was on the plane on the way over, I watched a movie called The Big Short, which is about the financial crisis. Um, and it, it sort of predated 2007, and there, there were these wealthy investment bankers, uh, wealthy bankers that had all these really crap phones. And you just sort of forget about um, how quickly the, the iPhone and, all the, all, and phone technologies de developed. Um, and we all know, you know, what, um, how mobile uh, smartphone take up is sort of growing, and that curve that you see is also an exponential type of curve. And there are a lot of people who believe virtual reality is going to get a similar sort of adoption. Um, there's the Microsoft HoloLens that is now taking pre-orders for its developer um, uh, pack. There's the HTC Vive, uh, which I had a play with uh, just, just last week. Uh, which is now available for people to order the commercial version. Uh, there's the Oculus Rift, which, which is also available and is shipping later this year, and, and its cousin, the Oculus uh, Gear, uh, which enables you to, to put your phone into the, into, the, into the gear, and so we can leverage the, 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 the adoption of phones that, is, that we've all seen to help uh, accelerate the adoption of virtual reality. Um, and there's, there's various um, estimates um, of, of what, how virtual reality is going to grow. <clears throat> so uh, I, I, I um, had my first play with virtual reality uh, about 18 months ago. I met this guy, uh, Neville Spiteri, which is probably not how you pronounce his name, uh, who, who is CEO of this company, WebVR. Uh, Web <coughs> and, and what they do is they're creating open source tools to help people produce virtual reality content. And uh, they recently received uh, uh, $25 million of funding, I think, last month to help grow that, which is typical. You see a lot of investment in virtual reality at the moment. Um, now, Neville uh, spoke about virtual reality, uh, and it's all very interesting. Uh, but at the end of the presentation, he, he had a, a, an Oculus Gear there. And after everyone had sort of stopped asking him questions, I said, oh, can I have a go with that? He's like, oh, don't tell anyone. And he took me off into a room with one other guy, and we had a go. And he'd created this, um, uh, th this experience called the, 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 the blue, which is you, you put this on and suddenly you're submersed in, underneath the ocean. You're standing on a, on a ship, and you see this whale coming towards you, and you can see fish, and, and you can look up and see the, the skylight, the sun coming through. And it was a completely immersive experience. You had the headphones on. You could hear these sounds. And um, once I experienced it, I, I was convinced that yes, this will become a platform because it's such an immersive experience. Um, and, and the question is, um, how is it going to become a platform? What is it going to look like? And are people going to do e-commerce on this? So you know, the, the, the initial application that everyone talks about is gaming because um, it's such a natural um, application for virtual reality the 3D worlds in which people um, uh, run around and you can, run, you can sort of see that you put this, this uh, device on and you can play around. Um, but but that's, that's for gamers, right? Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it gets, it may be very successful with gamers, but it doesn't mean that it's, it's uh, widespread like phones necessarily. Um, Facebook has produced this trailer for a movie about Henry the Hedgehog, which you can view in virtual reality. And there's a real challenge for, for movie producers that they're trying to understand how to do this. Because in a, in a normal movie, they have very tight control over what you see. But in a virtual reality movie, you can look around and you're not necessarily looking at the action. So they've got to give you cues as to where to look. But you can, you can have a more immersive experience uh, than just what you would have in a movie. And so they're experimenting with this. Maybe that's something that will, uh, that will, that will drive the adoption of virtual reality. Um, there's a, there's a company that shares a building with us where uh, one of the entrepreneurs is starting a virtual reality company. He's, he's a, a gamer, or a, he's run a gaming company. So they've got a lot of experience at creating um, 3D models. And this is something that I had a play with last week with the HT, HTC Vive, um, where we, uh, this is a, a training simulator for an X-ray machine where you could put the thing in under the patient and you could pull the machine down and, and adjust the focus and all that. And then the room on the, on the right there, you could walk into and then press the button and take a, take, a, take a picture. And it was kind of cool. You could even pick up the monitor and throw it around if you wanted to, which was strangely satisfying. Um, 
And, and this was something he, uh, he created in, in about a week or so. And, and the idea is these machines are very expensive to have available for training. You can do a certain amount of training in virtual reality. You know, th these sorts of applications, he had another one he developed for training to learn how to spray paint um, panels. Uh, and again, you can see, it's, well, it's, you can learn some of those things in virtual reality. You don't have to paint a whole lot of cars. You don't have the costs involved in that. Um, you know, these types of things may help spur the adoption of virtual reality. Unfortunately, well, not for, porn has, has driven the adoption of a lot of, um, a lot of new media from the printing press on. Um, undoubtedly, that will happen, or it is already happening. Now, but porn is basically video. And, and I think video could be one of those things, and this is my own personal opinion, that could drive the widespread adoption of virtual reality. There are these cameras, this is one that was released by Nokia um, just recently, that, that are horrendously expensive. They cost about $50,000 or some, some very large number. But we know that with this exponential growth of computing, uh, the drop, th these things are going to drop in cost and soon you'll, you'll have them everywhere and they'll be very, very accessible. And what these cameras do is they take videos from all sorts of different angles and the software stitches it together to produce this 360 degree video where um, you can experience it as if you were where the camera was. And I don't know, has anyone looked at the 360 degree? There's a YouTube um, channel where you can watch these 360 degree videos. Has anyone experimented and had a look with those? Uh, not a lot. So let me show you one. And, and again, it's um, what this here is, is a, um, a view from a cockpit where this just looks like a normal video, but you can grab your mouse and look around in every angle. Um, and that's kind of cool. And on the desktop, you sort of get a feel for what it's like. You can see there's the, the, there's the pilot's hand on the joystick. You can see the other planes. Uh, that are in the formation, and you can get, you can imagine that if you, if you were watching this in virtual reality, it was like you're in the cockpit. This experience is, is actually um, better when you look at it on a device like your phone or your iPad, where you can, as you move it around, you can you can see the different angles, and you can sort of imagine this being strapped to your head, and it's it's like you're in that environment, and. <clears throat> The people that have experienced this, and I experienced this with my uh, phone last week, you can try the Google Cardboard where you can put your phone on and experience it, um, which is a, yeah, the resolution isn't as good, it's not as good as these, these new devices, but it is a, an amazing experience. Um, it feels like you're there. And I think some, some of these applications uh, will drive the adoption of virtual reality. I mean, I think um, one, of the, one of the applications in particular is sports. If you could have um, virtual reality cameras at sports where you can experience the sport from the sideline, like this guy does for basketball, um, or you could watch, you know, from, you could have the experience of a touch judge at football, or Richie McCaw in the Sinbin if you're a rugby fan. <clears throat> and, uh, and it would be like you were there watching, like you do your kids' sport, but for your favourite team. Um, and you could, you could go, look around and see the crowd, you could, you could watch, pay attention. I think something like that could really drive the widespread adoption because I think it could be much better than the TV experience that we all use at the moment. Um, now imagine with this um, exponential growth of computing that a few of these cameras <laughs> located around an event could be, could stitch, rather than just stitching together the videos so you can see it from the perspective of the camera, they stitch together a complete 3D model so you could look at it from any perspective. So imagine watching a game from the perspective of a player. Um, so you could actually be, it's like you're, you were that player and you're running around and you can see the ball, you can, um, you know, it could be a completely different experience than you're able to experience at the moment. I think some of these things are gonna drive the adoption of virtual reality. And if, if, if it does indeed become a platform, then will e-commerce be one of those applications that people will do on this platform? Not all platforms people use for e-commerce. You know, the phones, the tablets, people do. <clears throat> uh, TVs, gaming consoles, not so much. Um, and this is a question that we need to ask ourselves. But before we do this, before we look at e-commerce and virtual reality and start to just think about what that might look like, I want to show you um, an another um, experience I had. I met this guy, Mark Sagar, uh, about three years ago um, at a conference. And Mark is an animator. He's, he's won a couple of Oscars for his work on King Kong and on Avatar. Um, and at the time I met him, he'd recently had a baby. And he did what any geeky 
animator would do. He created a, a, a working model of his baby daughter. Um, and this is what it looked like. And it, it was, this is one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. This is actually a, um, he had modeled the, the whole um, the skeleton system and the muscular system, the nerves that control it. He'd worked with the Auckland Brain uh, Research uh, Institute of the Auckland University to, to use biologically plausible neural models for controlling all of this. And, and, and what you could do, and what he did in this presentation, is he would interact with it. And I was a little bit sceptical, uh, thinking, well, how much of this is theatre versus uh, something that's actually real and working? But I got to have a play with this afterwards, where I went up to his PC, and I was in front of the PC, and the baby would follow you as you moved around in front of the PC. And then when you moved off, there's a little graph of its cortisol levels going up, and it would start to cry. And then you could move in front and sort of calm it down. <laughs> and it was the coolest thing. It felt like it was real. And, and so this was three years ago. And his baby has, has since grown up and, uh, you know, and is now a toddler, and so is his animation. And, and this is what, what his uh, animation looks like now. And, and now he's teaching it to read. And I'll show you a little video of this. Um, uh, let me just do it that way. Okay, okay, so, so here's, here's baby, baby X, X, and this is um, she's been learning to read words. So, so here's her first word. So let's see what she can see. Turn to the page. And here we go. Let's see what she can see. What's this, baby? What's this? What's this? What's this? What's this? Good girl. Let's see if she can see what it is. Okay, baby, look over here. Okay, what's this? What's this? Good girl. Let's try on something else. Okay. Okay, what's this? Baby, 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 what's this? Baby, look at me, look at me, what's this? Baby, 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 good girl. Well, that's what um, And I encourage you to go and have a look at that. Uh, the, you, could, you can look at a, a bunch of different Baby X videos, including one where he's actually brought his daughter in, uh, which wasn't hugely successful because she just was crying, um, but it's, uh, it must be a little freaky. But it, it's almost crass, crossing that uncanny valley. Um, you, f you almost feel like she, that baby that's inside the computer is real. You can definitely feel like it's almost a person. And you think, with this exponential growth of computing power, maybe she's going to take over the world. Um, so uh, in August last year, I, I, when I was in Auckland, I, I caught up with Mark. And I went and visited him in that office, which is exactly as it looks. There's piles of books, and he's testing different models. Uh, and it was really interesting to find out what he's working on at the moment. So he's working on um, face simulators. He's trying to commercialize some of this technology. So this is where um, you could have uh, something like Siri, rather than just being a little squiggly line. It could be a face. And you know that could really change your interaction with Siri. Maybe you're not going to hate it so much when it really seems like a person. Um, maybe you'll be able to choose who that's going to look like. Maybe it could look like someone that you know. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of possibilities with that. Um, they're also working on full 3D models of, of the whole human body. Um, it, it, they're trying different things with baby and the high chair and, 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 and the way it's going to work. Um, but there's, there's medical um, applications for this. Doctors are already using virtual reality to learn about um, the biology as part of their training, and they, they, you can do 3D scans and they can use virtual reality to, to diagnose patients. There's a lot of p potential for that. Um, but I think it's also potentially really interesting where you could have 3D models of your own body that you could use potentially when you go and see the doctor where they can say, here's, here's exactly how I think your arteries are or what you're doing to your liver with all that drinking. Um, and, uh, but you could also use that 3D model. Um, if you're gaming, you could use it in other, other applications. Potentially, you could use it in e-commerce. Um, and, and so let's just fantasize a little bit about what virtual reality and, and e-commerce could look like, Poten potentially if you have these 3D models of yourself and of those people that you shop for. Um, there are various people that are um, thinking about what could e-commerce look like in virtual reality. And I think one of the challenges here 
is you need to make sure that it's a better experience than just what you can do on on the PC or the devices that you're using at the moment. There's got to be some compelling reason. You know, I think you can shop on your TV with different devices, but it's just, you know, it's easier to use your computer. And I think with the virtual reality, that is the challenge where you need to make sure that it is more compelling. This is a demonstration that Facebook have been working on. Facebook owns Oculus um, with Nordstrom where you can bring up the, the, the products and turn them around. And I don't think this is overly compelling myself. Um, I haven't experienced it, but I sort of feel like you can do that on, on, your, on, your, um, on your computer. You can, you can rotate products around. Um, you've got to, it's got to create something that is more compelling than what you can do at the moment. Um, there's a, there's a, a New York retailer called The Line, I think, that set up this apartment um, where you can browse around this apartment in virtual reality. You put your goggles on and you can sort of look at these triangles and navigate through this apartment and you can... Uh, triangles appear over products and you can find out more about the products. And so here they've tried to set up, here's all the things we're selling and we've presented them in, a, in, in an optimal way uh, or in a really nice way, compelling way. Um, and the virtual reality is kind of like what you could get in a showroom. Um, maybe this will work, I don't know. The, the, the navigation around feels a little clumsy to me. Um, but I think the, 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 what, the interesting thing they're doing here is they're experimenting and they're trying to work out what works, what doesn't work. There are things like this virtual mirror where you, know, you can see yourself in the mirror wearing the, the product that you're, you're contemplating wearing. And I think some of this is getting a little more interesting. I can imagine um, if you have this, uh, this model of your own body, you could see when, when you're looking at a site, you could see all of the clothes that you're looking to wear or the products that you're looking to buy with you interacting with it, you wearing those clothes. Um, you could see yourself, um, you know, what does this jacket look like with something else that I have um, at, in my wardrobe. Um, or if I'm shopping for my son, I could see my son there and I could see what he looks like riding on this bike. Um, and retailers are trying different things here. And, and, and the really interesting thing is, you know, is this going to be able to be something that's compelling, that's going to make people buy more stuff, make people shop this way? Um, Volvo, for example, is trying both the, something with the HoloLens where you can see um, a combination that's augmented reality where you can see the car sort of being built up on the inside or virtual reality where you can see yourself driving. You could imagine a car ad where um, rather than the perfect family that's in the car and the dog, um, you could see your family um, and the car driving up to your house and getting out at, at your house. Um, <clears throat> there's, there's all sorts of opportunities. And then um, at, at SLI, we've been trying to think about how is this relevant to, to our core business? And so we've been trying to think, well, what would search look like in virtual reality? So maybe you do a search for guns and you get something like this. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and you know, you, you, you don't need all those aisles, but you could sort of see, you could have products coming at you, you could have things you could swipe through um, you could see, you know, you, the, all the different products that you're looking at with, rather than the stock standard models with you in, in, in there and you can swipe through and look at these things. That's the sort of things that we're just starting, starting to think about. This is obviously taken from the Matrix. And I don't know how many of you saw this image um, from uh, <coughs> recently uh, at the um, Mobile World Conference in Barcelona. This is the Samsung event where everyone got to try the Oculus. And, and Mark Zuckerberg walked up while they all had these VR things on. <clears throat> By the way, I, th I think these are, these are kind of like the big bricky cell phones that you used to have in the, in the 80s um, that we'll look back and laugh, laugh at. But this feels like he's the only one that's not plugged into the Matrix. Uh, he, he was apparently uh, treated like a rock star when they finally took those things off and saw he was there. Um, one of the things we do at SLI is we do these Innovation Day where the engineers can go away and work on anything they want for a day. And um, you know, we've had some products that are now in circulation that have come out of these days. But we also try things that are, that are out there. And we've had some engineers experimenting with search and virtual reality and e-commerce and virtual reality. And this was done over a year ago. And it was only done in a day. We were experimenting with putting products into a virtual environment and, and, and experimenting with how do you get this meta information? How do you display that? To me, this feels very much like um, the WAP interface that you used to browse before you had the smartphone. It's very, very basic. But what we're doing here is just starting to expose some of the issues 
that you need to answer if you going if this is indeed going to be a platform for e-commerce. And of course, they they tried the search with products and guns going down that you could play with. Um, and it, it's it's a, it's kind of a lot of fun, but it's stimulating. You start to identify these problems. You start to think about well, what are they going to be? How can we solve them? Is this something that we that could turn into something that everyone's going to use? One of the other things we've been doing is. Um, experimenting with this concept of building models of people. Now, we're not building anatomically correct uh, full models of people like Mark Sagar is uh, with his baby X, but we've been looking at building models one attribute at a time um, and using these to improve the, you know, to personalize the search and navigation and recommendations that we currently power. So what we did here is we had it so that um, when you were searching, you'd be asked this question, who you're shopping for, myself or someone else? And then you'd fill in some details about yourself, um, you know, uh, gender, age, some size information. And what this meant is when you did a search for something like shirt, we would automatically filter those results so they were only the shirts that were for males that were for my size. Um, or I could say, oh, I'm searching for my wife, and the same search term, we'd see results personalised to her. So this is just things that we're experimenting with, we're trying to work out are these things that we that could be steps on the way to this um, bigger vision of, 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 of what um, e-commerce could look like? Um, and, uh, a, a, and as with all of these things, it's, you, you're never done. You're always experimenting. You're always trying different things. Um, and, and that bring, brings me to the, uh, the end of my presentation. But what I, what I want you to do as a result of this is these virtual reality devices are, are coming out now. These cameras are available. Um, I encourage you to get your hands on these to experience it for yourself, so you can have um, you can have this this uh, this thought. You know, can I use this in my business? Imagine how what could it look like? Could this could my customers use something like this to have a better experience with my brand, with my products, um, and and have a play? If you can, get some of these cameras and try doing some, th some 360 degree videos. Um, get your customers to engage with them. And, and I just encourage you to, uh, to, to experiment and to try because you guys, in the end, are the leaders that are going to be developing this new version of e-commerce. And with that, I can take some questions if we've got some Thank time. Thank you. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely fascinating stuff. And um, I don't know if you're aware, but I, I work for a, a show called Click on the BBC, and we made the first 360-degree TV programme. Oh, you did? And so we did it with GoPros, so we had a, a 2D broadcast, yeah. but you can then go onto YouTube and you can actually look around and see, see all aspects of that. So, and that was a world first, apparently. Um, but it just goes to show you how realistic now these things are becoming. You know, only a year ago we were talking about VR in terms of, oh, you know, in the future sometime, yes. but these things are really happening now, They're aren't happening they? They're happening right now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so to, how far do you think, um, how long do you think it will be before we start seeing applications that allow us to, because you know, for me, I love online shopping. I hate going out and <laughs> seeing real people in the shopping environment. You've got a lot of friends here. <laughs> but I still, I'm quite a visual person, so yeah. I, kind of, I want to be able to walk down the aisle and, yeah. and browse products and pick them up and, and, and you know, turn them around. How, how Realistically, how far do you think we are from that kind of well, well, there's a lot of challenges. I mean, we're not going to be at the stage where you've got to have your virtual reality-enabled site, um, like you've got your mobile-enabled um, site at the moment. Um, you know, one of those challenges is having 3D models of all of your products that can be bought into that. Into that. And that's kind of analogous to the, the, the challenge people had of getting photos of all of their products. Mm. But manufacturers are already starting to think about, well, um, how can I produce these 3D models? And there are companies out there that are helping produce these. Um, so I think, um, it, again, if you go back to the, the cell phone analogy, you know, when the smartphones came out in 2007, people w would browse on sites on them, they would shop on them, but nothing was really mobile optimised. A few people started doing that and you're like, oh, that's actually a better experience. So I, we're going to be flooded with these devices, I think, um, mm, mm. this year. And people, as soon as they get into, into widespread hands, people are going to start experimenting. So it wouldn't surprise me if, if in another year's time um, we've, we've started playing with these things and you'll see some of these innovators trying some of these things and that, that will explode. So that, I mean, that really, for me, that kind of brings it into focus because we tend to still think about these things in the distant future, but with the exponential speed of 
uh, technology advances, these things are getting closer and closer. Uh, any more questions for Sean from the audience? Anybody got anything there? Yes, go ahead, sir. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I experienced uh, virtual reality for the first time myself, and it was in a small bathroom specialist in Horsham. Yeah. So this wasn't like a big shop, this was a, a small independent. And I actually saw the bathroom they designed in 4D and moved around, washed my hands, whacked the young lad in the head. I didn't realise that I was, I was in the bathroom. And, yeah, right. uh, and there was with an Oculus Rift. What do you think some of the, the barriers or challenges are for greater adoption of this? Because this is a, a business that has invested in a, a young techie lad who's able to use some CAD and some rendering software to do this. What do you think some of these challenges are? Clearly, apart from being whacked in the head by your customers. Yeah, which is very easy to do <laughs> when you, you don't see the actual environment. Um, in fact, that's one of the advantages of their HTC Vive is you, you put these little sensors up and it gives you a restricted area and it will tell you if you come to, come to the end of it. But I think um, there's a lot of people that have experience in building 3D models. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that have been doing gaming, for example, that are going to be able to apply, sort of go out from the gaming and, and use all of these types of applications. So there's actually a lot of people who have the skills that could do that. You know, the thing I was interested in, I mean, uh, there, that's a, some techie guys put that together. That probably, you know, he's he's one of the first people that's got experience building virtual reality. You can see that they, those people are going to be highly in demand. The 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 guy in my building, um, you know, it took him about a week to build that whole training uh, demonstration. That you know, he's trying to sell to a to a company that's trying to do that sort of training. So you can see that these people are going to come out of the woodwork and 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 their skills are going to be in demand. But there are a lot of them out there that can repurpose those skills that where they've been bu building three D models and other environments that can then experiment with retail. Did you feel like it would it was an experience that would make you be more likely to actually come to a purchasing decision? Well, it, was, it was amazing. Yeah. To be honest, um, the last time I saw VR was at um, some internet conference in two thousand. Right. So Very was, different. Like, way, way beyond. Yeah. Um, Speaking to the owner, he did actually say that the, the engagement and feedback from his um, clients has ex exponentially grown in terms of conversions or uh, allows them to um, drive a better conversion rate or you know, drive more business. Mm. And it's interesting because while you're there and you've got the headset on and you turn around and say, do you know what, I don't like those tiles, the young lad just goes, diddly, 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 and then new tiles are up there. <laughs> and um, you think from a, from a retail perspective, how could I could literally do that I know, in 20 years' time, choose what I want, self-design my own bathroom, and then press buy, and there's 20 grand on. Yeah, bang. That's how and I'd like to try on new outfits as well, literally. I mean, that thing, I hate that, you know, getting changed in a cramped space like this, but to actually just stand there and press a button and go, ka -ching. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, I'll buy that. I, I would spend far too much money, though, it has to be said. Um, <laughs> any more questions from the audience? Yes, sir. Do you know, I mean, I don't know if I'm unusual in this respect, but I buy all of my clothes online because I literally hate the physical shopping experience because uh, I can't visualise stuff on a hanger as well. This is my main problem. When I go into a big retail outlet, I can't, you know, most of them, they're on, their spaces are premium, so everything's on hangers and shelves, in, in racks and stuff, and I can't visualise them on me. So I go and go, ah, no, nothing. But I go along to somewhere like ASOS, and you've got the, the, the catwalk kind of like demonstration. You see how the material flows. Um, and, and that's how I buy. I don't know. I don't know if the, that's just show of hands from the people in the audience. How, how many of you feel that touch is a vital element if, to, to, to purchasing an item of clothing? So quite a few of you. For, for how many people uh, buy stuff based on how it works online and, you know, and how you, if you see a video? Okay, so still quite a lot of you, right? And there's always the option to send it back. So it's a really interesting, it's a really interesting question. What do you think? I mean, do you think the sort of tactile nature of... Yeah, and, and virtual reality, you're not going to get that. But in the same way, you don't get that when you're shopping online. And, and people are like, oh, people are never going to buy shoes online. They can't try them on and see how they feel. But there's billions of dollar companies that have been created from people that, that do do that, despite that. And we've actually, on Click, we've looked at technologies that are coming in the, in the not-too-distant future that give you force feedback, haptic response. So not quite the same as being able to pick up a piece of fabric, but you still could, you know, perhaps for tiling or something, you could get a sense of what that physically is going to feel like through these kind of haptic technologies. 
Um, well, listen, Sean, we're out of time. I know Sean's going to be around for the day, so if you've got any more questions for him, if you want to pick his brains further, then he will be here, um, and I'm sure he'll be very happy to, to speak to you during the, the breaks. Uh, thank you very much, yeah, Sean. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.